St. Kizito was a coeducational boarding secondary school in Akiti location, Meru County. It was named after St. Kizito. The school was established in 1968. Initially, it began as an all-boys school and began admitting girls in 1975. By 1991, the school had 577 students between the ages of 14 and 18, 306 boys and 271 girls. A combination of gender that proved to be tragic and one that would cause stress and trauma for the longest time possible. On the night of the 13th of July 1991, students, particularly boys, went on rampage as they complained that they had been humiliated when the school administration failed to pay the fees necessary for their participation in an inter-school athletic competition. In previous weeks, the students from various schools in Meru district had riots that ranged from bad food to no running water. The Weekly Review newspaper done by the late Hilary Ungueno reported that Kirogo Secondary School students rioted burning buildings, invaded a girl's dormitory and raped several of the girls, an incident that would be repeated at St. Kizito a few weeks later. At another school, the boys were so upset at the food that they dumped the cook in a vat of porridge. Fast forward to July 13, 1991 at St. Kizito, the boys decided to stage a strike against the school administration led by the then principal Mr. James Laboni. The girls refused to join the planned strike, an action which infuriated the boys who began to threaten them. The angry male students planned to teach the girls a lesson. To carry out their plan, they cut the electricity supply to the girls' dormitory causing a temporary blackout. Then they went ahead to disconnect the phone line so that no distress calls would be made. A school worker said some of the boys who were shrouded in sheets and armed with flashlights headed to the girls' dorms to pick several girls whom they suspected of having sexual relations with SEH officials as well as teach them a lesson for rejecting calls for the planned strike just after 9 p.m. The first clue that madness had broken out at the boarding school appeared when Massimo Balatino's house, the administrator of the Tigania Hospital, went dark. Once the boys cut the power, they began screaming and throwing rocks at the girls' dorms. The dorms were made of cinder block and had tin roofs. The girls retreated to one dormitory, which had metal bars on the windows. The boys broke the windows with rocks and continued to terrorize the girls by tossing a barrage of rocks onto the tin roof. Just before 2 a.m., the Reverend Alexander Kiranja, who ran a mission next door to St. Kizito, was awakened by a most serious knocking on his door, he said. It was the terrified watchman who told Kiranja that the boys were on a rampage and had threatened them with death by stoning. By then, the boys had not yet broken down the dorm doors. Kiranja had no phone, so he took the watchman next door to the hospital to call police. The priest said he did not go to the H with the watchman and try to restore order. They feared to enter the H when the boys are unruly. Back at school, the 271 girls of St. Kizito stuffed themselves into one dormitory. As the boys battered the door in an attempt to get to them, the girls rushed to the far corner of the room. The door finally gave way and the boys rushed in. We were attacked as if by a pack of hungry hyenas, one girl later told reporters. The girls packed themselves into one corner. It was at this corner where majority of the dead bodies were found. Around 3 a.m., some girls managed to escape and run to the hospital. They were in shock when they arrived, said John, a clinical nurse on duty that night. They said there was a riot at the SJH and the boys were beating them. They were complaining of pains and said they had been raped. By 3.30, the hospital was overflowing with injured girls. Finally, the police arrived and went to the now deserted school. Balatino drove an ambulance to the school with the police. They discovered the 19 bodies piled atop one another. They had suffocated. I have never seen anything like it, Balatino said. It was like civil war. There were bodies everywhere. They were already stiff. The doctor said they had been dead about three hours. Autopsies showed that none of the dead had been raped. On that day, the 14th of July, 1991, Moy visited the Sh and saw the shocking horror that had left the whole nation in grief, demanded for the closure, as 39 boys were apprehended in connection to the strike, rapes, and death of the girls. Three things shocked the nation. Following the investigation into the St. Kizito horrors, the principal's revelation, the deputy principal's remark to President Moy, and the saddest part, the police contribution in the whole event. The principal, James Leboni, told the reporter for the Kenya Times, in the past the boys would scare the girls out of their dorms and drag them to the bush where they would do their thing and the matter would end there. 
with the students going back to their respective dorms. Basically, the principal was trying to tell the nation that was just a norm around the school and it was a known secret. The deputy principal, Joyce Kathira, was quoted by the same Kenya Times as having told President Daniel Arab Moy that the boys never meant any harm against the girls, they just wanted to rape. Yes, you read that right. The saddest part of the St. Kizito story is that it could have been prevented if police had reacted more quickly to reports of a disturbance at the school. Several teachers who boarded the school could have stopped it but were too terrified of the 306 male students. Two night watchmen, armed with bows and arrows, did not attempt to stop the assault on the girls' dormitory because the boys stoned them and chased them off. And what of the police? About midnight, two teachers managed to escape the school grounds and run to a police station 15 minutes from the school. Two hours later, the police still had not arrived and the watchman called the station from a nearby hospital where they had run for safety. The police said they were aware of the situation but they said they had no petrol and couldn't come, said Massimo Ballatino, who later said the police finally arrived about 3.30 a.m. By then it was too late since a total of 19 girls were already dead. The aftermath of all this was some of the boys cooling their bodies in the prison, and worse form of justice was applied by the parents of the girls who were raped and those who were killed. Traditional forms of justice was sought. The main perpetrators and everybody who participated in the madness is either dead or walking around the market today as a madman. Do you think justice was served for the victims of the St. Cazito tragedy, or can it be ruled out as underage misdemeanor? What is your perspective?